is a rich tradition in mathematics of clever tricks to find somebody's age. For example, take your birth month, 1 through 12, for me that's June, which would be 6, multiply by 2, for me that's 12, then add 5, so I get to 17, then multiply by 50, and that's going to bring me to, let's see, 17 times 50 is 850, then add your age, which is a little bit fishy for a trick that's supposed to find your age, but I'm still open to being surprised. Then subtract 365. Wow, this is a very slick trick. And finally, add 115. The result, if you've done your arithmetic right, will start with your birth month and end with your age. Wow, I'm absolutely delighted. Or here's another fun one with squares. Present these squares to your victim, then ask them to point to each square where their age is present. Maybe your victim points to square one, two, four, and five. Then we can instantly and boldly tell our victim that they must be 23 years old. All you have to do is add the numbers in the top left of the squares they pointed to. 16 plus two is 18, plus four is 22, plus one gives the age of 23. Perhaps you have some favorite math age tricks. Please do share in the comments. These first two were from Jack Frolickstein's Mathematical Fun Games and Puzzles. Unfortunately, the cute square trick is a little bit of an outlier. Most of these silly math tricks boil down to doing stuff and undoing stuff with algebra in a completely unremarkable way. But the average Joe is unlikely to see just how obvious the trick is because one, the average Joe isn't particularly well acquainted with mathematics, and two, the victim of your trick is being forced to carry out your silly calculations in their head, which doesn't leave a ton of room for deciphering the crux of your performance. I'd say much like viral PEMDAS problems, the age tricks are often fun for laymen and not of interest to those who are a bit more engaged in mathematics because there really isn't any interesting mathematical content in these things. In fact, the do some math, that's your age tricks have become so tired that it's not uncommon to find memes mocking them. Here's a good one. Take your age, subtract two, then add two. That's your age. Well, hot diggity dog. This is another meme mocking these math tricks, but this one is unique because the mathematics behind it aren't completely trivial. Take your age, multiply by I, multiply by I, multiply by I, multiply by I. That's your age. For anyone not already familiar with I, it's the first number we typically learn about that doesn't actually exist on the number line. I know, right? What kind of hipster number? number isn't on the number line. Well, if you've ever graphed y equals x squared, you may have noticed it's all up here above the x-axis because no number squared produces a negative. This turned out to be a bit of a problem for mathematicians though, so Gerolamo Cardano began to consider what we now call imaginary numbers that could produce negatives when squared in 1545. He described them as mental torture, so it can't be said poor imaginary numbers were born into a loving family. The imaginary unit, or I as it has come to be known following the notation of Leonard Euler, is a number that when squared equals negative one. So looking back at the meme, what happens? Your age is multiplied by I, so that's I times your age, that's cool. Then multiply by I again, that's the same as I squared, which we now know is negative one. And then we multiply by i again, so at that point we have negative i, and then multiply by i one last time. This then is negative i squared. Again, i squared is negative 1, so this is negative negative 1 which is positive one, which means at the end of it all, we've multiplied your age by one, which is why at the end of the day, you get your age. And by the way, you can get the Leonard Euler Mathema Pigeon Pin along with four other adorable Mathema Pigeon Pins exclusively at my math fashion store, mathgen.com. This is a reference to Combinatorics' beloved pigeonhole principle. Check it out, link in the description and the pinned comment, mathgen.com.
That's a quality meme, but it's hard not to be hit with a pressing question upon seeing this. I mean, you have to think, negative one times negative one is positive one, so we could have made this meme just with negative one and with only two multiplications. Using i, we can get a meme with four multiplications, but what if we wanted an even stupider meme? What if we wanted eight? multiplications. Of course, we could just run it back with i and do i eight times, which would be like multiplying by one twice, or we could just multiply by one as many times as we like. But that's not very satisfying. We'd really like something we need to multiply together eight times to produce positive one, just like we have to multiply i together four times to get positive one. And there may be some fantastical hope that this pursuit could lead us to another new type of number. After all, i came about because the real numbers aren't algebraically closed. That means there are polynomial equations with real number coefficients, like the famous x squared plus one equals zero, that have no solution in the real numbers, including the imaginary numbers with the reals, which forms what are called the complex numbers, solves this problem for those polynomials. But does it introduce new polynomials, which again have no solutions, even in the complex numbers? Well, interestingly, the answer is no. The complex numbers are algebraically closed. And so the number we seek for our eight multiplication meme, which is a, we might say, non-trivial solution to this equation certainly exists among the complex numbers. And how to find such a number becomes obvious once we take a geometric approach. Why do we need two copies of negative one to get positive one? It's because multiplying by negative one reflects a number to the negatives. And multiplying by negative one again gives us another reflection, bringing us right back to where we started. And if you didn't know already, just like the number line, there is a wonderful model for imagining numbers. While they could exist on their own as just copies of the imaginary unit, generally we mash them together with the real numbers to produce the two-part complex numbers. And since complex numbers have real and imaginary parts, representing them requires two lines, a real axis and the perpendicular imaginary axis, together allowing us to visualize complex numbers on the complex plane. When it comes to multiplication, one is the starting point right here. Multiplying by one doesn't do anything. But if we multiply by i, that brings us to i, which is a rotation of 90 degrees. Multiplying by i again produces i squared, or negative one, which is another rotation of 90 degrees. Then negative one times i is negative i, another rotation of 90 degrees, and a final multiplication by i produces two factors of negative one, bringing us right back to positive one, which again is a rotation of 90 degrees. As as we saw, that's how this meme works. But if we want to require eight multiplications for an even funnier meme, well, all we have to do is rotate half as quickly. Instead of 90, 90, 90, 90, we need to rotate 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, and 45. So multiplying by i is a 90 degree rotation. We're going to zoom into things to get a better look at exactly which complex number is going to represent this 45 degree rotation. So now we've zoomed in. You can see this out here is one. This up here is i. We need to know what number is this here, which represents a rotation of 45 degrees. Well, of course, this length here is one since it's like the one was just rotated 45 degrees. Then the imaginary part of the complex number we're looking for is its vertical height. And the real part of the complex number representing this rotation is its horizontal distance from the origin. So what are these pieces that we need to find the lengths of? Well, it turns out they are the legs of an isosceles right triangle. We know that this angle is 45 degrees, but that forces this angle over here to also be 45 degrees, so that together the angle sum of this triangle is 180. Since these two angles are congruent, the sides opposite them are congruent as well. We can then use the Pythagorean theorem to write that this side length, which we'll call A, 
squared plus this side length squared, this side length is the same, so we'll also write that as a squared, equals the hypotenuse squared. So in this case, one squared. Hence, two a squared equals one, and so a is plus or minus the square root of one half. But we only need one fun answer, so we'll just go with the positive answer, square root of one half. And remember, that's both the real part and the imaginary part of this complex number. And that means that the number z we need to represent the 45 degree rotation is root half plus root half i, or if you prefer, 1 plus i divided by root 2. You could try doing the multiplication to check this for yourself, but indeed, 1 plus i over root 2 to the power of 8 is equal to positive 1. And so, here is our incredible new meme. Take your age, multiply by 1 plus i over root 2, 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 that's your age. And indeed, we could use trigonometry to extend this meme to any length we like by just finding the complex number to cause the appropriate rotation. I guess the one problem with this meme as an age-finding math trick is that it requires the victim to know imaginary numbers, which might make it harder to bust this one out successfully at the parlor. So here's an easier one that anybody could do with a little effort. Take your age, then add two, then subtract one, then subtract a half, then subtract a fourth, then subtract an eighth, then subtract a sixteenth, then subtract a thirty-second, then subtract a sixty-fourth, then subtract a one hundred twenty-eighth, then subtract a two hundred fifty-six, then subtract a five hundred twelfth, then subtract a thousand twenty-fourth. And you could carry this on as long as your victim will let you. When they say, I'm done with this nonsense, and complain that the result isn't equal to their age, you can tell them it was gonna work if they kept going. Riverside Drive, help me up when the first man I love died, when I can only say I love you, through sobs and they say I miss you. Last time I was in talking shells out of the shotguns, someone with a much bigger...